In this lesson, we'll create layouts that go all the way to the edge of the screen past our container's max width. Previously, we could only do this with viewport width, and it would only work if the layout split right down the middle. But in this case, we can really have it start and end at any point we want, and it'll just figure out how far it needs to go for us. So we could have this start at the edge of the screen and maybe end where our container ends. So I can say end at content, or we can maybe have it start at the content block, and maybe we want it to end at the other edge of the screen. So end on full. We can really position these wherever we want. Normally, inside each section we have a container that has some padding and also a max width but for this section we're not going to have any container instead we'll drop in a header layout and this is where we'll apply our grid so we're going to add a new utility that's available in lumos called ugrid breakout this grid goes all the way to the edge of the screen. In fact, if we drop a couple elements in here, notice how our main grid throughout the site is based on 12 columns, but this breakout is actually a 14 column grid. So these extra columns on the side will always go to the edge of the screen, while these inner columns stay within our max width. Now, what if our design was based on a 10 column grid or something else instead? We can open our custom code, open our base embed, and this variable at the top defines the global column count everywhere throughout our site. So for our guides, our mobile first grids, our breakout grids, everything. So I can switch everything over to be based on a 10 column design and notice how it all updates. And now our breakout is based on 10 columns inside with two outer columns here. So I'm going to add some items inside this breakout grid that we can position. So we'll start by dropping in a div with the class of header content, and I'll drop in a header content component. I just have some pre-populated text, and then I'll drop another div with the class of header uh, visual, and let's drop in a header visual component with an image. So we're going to select this content and we'll give it a column custom utility and that just adds these properties we can control. Now this space within the max width is called the content region and the space going edge to edge of the screen is the full region. So for this content block, we want it to start within our content region and that way it just starts right there and we want it to span over five so it goes to the halfway point. Now for this visual, let's also add a column custom utility. And we're gonna want this to start on, usually we would say start on six right here, but you'll notice it's offset because this first space counts as a column. So I'm gonna say start on seven. And for the end, I want it to go all the way to the end of the full region. So it goes to the edge of the screen. Now on tablet here, I'm going to select the content and I'm going to want it to end where the content block ends. So we'll say end on content. And then for this visual, I want it to start uh, where the content block starts. And we could either make it end where the content block ends, if I say content, and that way it's completely contained, but I like it kind of breaking out this edge in this case. And if we want it, we could even make it start where the full spot starts so it breaks out across both sides but i'll leave it just on one for now now what if we want the same layout in reverse we can duplicate our whole section we can select this visual and we can give it a combo class of is reversed and when we do that we'll be able to link this class to a component field if we want to switch it out for the whole section but we're going to add a custom property of order negative one which just moves it above the content block without us having to drag the visual block above the content block. It's just right there at this top. And we'll go ahead and set it to start where the full block starts. And we'll, for the end, we'll set it to span over something like six. So it goes right there to the halfway. And then for this content block, we'll give this a combo of is reversed. And we want it to start on what is seven so that it's right there in the halfway point and we'll have it end where the content block ends. Now, when we head down to mobile, this first layout still looks all right, but we wanna customize now this second version, the reversed version. So we're gonna set this uh, text here to basically start where the content block starts. And for this visual here, we're gonna set its order back to zero, which is the default resting order. So it'll just be where it's supposed to be. And we want it to start now where the content starts and we want it to end 
where the full ends so it matches the first instance. And that's really all we need to do to create these layouts that break out past their parent even on really large screen sizes.